Vladimir Putin won re-election in a landslide this weekend. He won reportedly over 87% of the vote this morning with over 99% of the vote counted. Uh, yes, we would call that a landslide. The Western press is saying these elections were a scam and that Putin shot down his major opposition, so this was not a free and fair election. Joining us from Russia is Mike Jones, a British journalist and someone who is on the ground in Moscow and has observed the things that are and are not happening. So thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So a couple of things that the Western press is saying that these were not free and fair elections because the major opponents of Putin were not allowed to run. So can you tell us a little bit about the temperament of this election and whether or not it does seem in fact that Putin has 87% support? Uh, so, yes, he, he does have an overwhelming majority of support. This idea that he didn't have opposition is, again, pretty preposterous. Uh, as I've often said on this channel, the second largest party is the Communist Party. So Kharitonov, Nikolai Kharitonov, 75-year-old leader of the Communist Party, came in second. Uh, for perspective, he gained uh, something like 4% of the vote. Uh, we then had uh, Danakov uh, of the other party, 3.8%, and finally Leonid Slutsky with 3.2% of the vote, which gives you an idea of the disparity. So there definitely were these opposition figures, but people I spoke to that voted, uh, it was kind of humorous. They weren't aware of the other candidates until they read the ballot. I said, so you've never heard of Leonid Slutsky? Like, no, <laughs> not until I looked at the ballot sheet. That's not paying attention, how... just Putin is their, their main squeeze. And this is actually a very serious point to make when it comes to Russia. Putin is the only option, really, certainly at this point in time, that Russia has. It is a concern of Russian citizens of a post-Putin era. It also, uh, if you think about it, it can be seen as why the West has pushed so heavily for regime change in Russia. There is no real trusted viable alternative to Putin at this point in time. And that's a great weakness for Russia. So again, I'll stress, this is why perhaps Newland and the collective West are, have been pushing so hard to cause turmoil in Russia. I have never seen such a concerted campaign by any power in the world to interfere in another country's democratic process than what we've seen in the lead up to the Russian vote. We saw a swath of drone strikes against even as far north as St. Petersburg, all the way down south to Rostov. We saw a concerted effort by the Ukrainian military under this guise of Russian volunteers to try and actually violate the borders in Belgorod. We've had civilian polling stations targeted not just by artillery, but also by guerrilla tactics of Ukrainian telegram channels paying people to throw Molotov cocktails, pour paint, all sorts, even blackmail, where a man from the SMO, a military veteran, was scammed out of his compensation payment for an industry and was promised the return if he then sabotaged the ballot box. We then have Matthew Miller of the US State Department threatening international observers for doing their job, which for me, again, is baffling because surely these international observers are your greatest asset in exposing what Matthew Miller and the West are saying are sham elections. Surely these very people would be able to record evidence and broadcast that evidence and proof. You wouldn't need to record scam videos where you stage a Russian polling station, quite obviously, and pretend that soldiers are looking over the shoulders of citizens. So for the countries that are the champions of democracy, uh, let's also note that Ukraine has suspended its elections. You're not allowed to vote there. Uh, right. It really is flabbergasting hypocrisy. Right. And so I think what two things that the Western press is holding on to is that Nadezhdin was not allowed to run, and so Putin was shutting down that opposition, and Navalny mysteriously died. He was not a candidate for this election. He was in prison. Now, let's just quickly touch on those two dudes that the West is holding on to as proof that this was not a free and fair election. Now, Nadezhdin, you and I spoke about recently, uh, was a very little known candidate, and he failed to properly register his candidacy because of suspicions of high percent of invalid signatures. Russian President Putin said on Sunday when he was asked about Navalny that they were intending to 
actually prisoner swap Navalny before his death, which supports the theory that the West could have killed him. Uh, secondly, as for Mr. Navalny, yes, he passed away. That's always a sad thing. But we had other incidents when people in prison died. Doesn't it happen in the United States? It has happened, and on many occasions. And I can tell you one thing, maybe it will come as a surprise. Several days before Mr. Navalny passed away, some colleagues of mine told me, not the people from not the administration staff, some people told me that there was an idea to exchange Mr. Navalny for some people who are behind bars in the Western countries. Can you just ring in on these two characters, these two archetypes that the West is holding on to, and then maybe ring in on whether or not Navalny was in fact a victim of the West when he was no longer useful as a puppet? Yeah, actually there's three candidates we saw in quick succession. Yekaterina Duntseva was the first oh, yes, uh, sort of Western her. puppet yes. that was held up. Came out of nowhere, funded, and like Nadezhdin, she failed to secure enough signatures to secure nomination and candidacy for the election. Very quickly after, she then sort of admitted that um, she had made a mistake in the filing of paperwork. Nadezhdin came on the scene, and likewise, he failed to collect enough signatures and allegedly, uh, according to Russian sources and the official electoral commission, there were questions about legitimacy of some signatures, something about being using names of dead people. Navalny, as you rightly say, was never a candidate. He was in prison. He was not on the ballot sheet. He never had a chance to be nominated. And yet, still in the Western media, was an opposition leader somehow. Uh, the, other, the other point to make there is people were saying that Navalny said, go and vote as a protest. Ironically, I read in The Independent that those interviewed at this Navalny protest vote, one of the guys actually said he voted for Putin. So I'm not sure quite what was achieved there. What made me laugh was when they said, ah, yes, by voting for another candidate, these people are protesting against Putin. Well, excuse me, but I, I thought that's democracy, where if you don't like the incumbent leader and vote for the other one, it's yes, it's technically a protest. But, you know, is that not what has happened in other countries why Rishi Sunak sort of ran out to Downing Street when George Galloway got elected? A lot of people protested by a democracy. So, again, we see this twist of narrative as to what's a usual process. Uh, with regards to Navalny, Putin came out after his sort of acceptance speech uh, with his election and admitted this plan to exchange Navalny. And he was very careful in what he said uh, in that, and then a few days later, a very sad event happened. Uh, Navalny died, which was, as he said, tragic and didn't didn't allude any further as to perhaps why. But I think uh, as you kind of uh, point towards, it does seem that Navalny's last useful act was to die, uh, sadly. And even that was a futile act. Right. Yes, we had uh, Gilbert Doctorow on the show who wrote a great substack about why he thinks the Brits did it. That's your country, not mine. Your country went rogue over Alexei Navalny. Uh, I s encourage you to seek out that substack in that video because it's fascinating, almost like the Bourne identity, but uh, seems to be real. Now, you point out there were numerous attempts of bribe and coercing people into sabotaging ballot boxes. Uh, it seems like that was instant incited from Ukrainian supporters. What can you tell us about that? Uh, not just Ukrainian. And as you just said, the British are purportedly behind a lot of these actions, particularly this invasion of Belgorod, uh, British coordinated efforts there. Yeah, there's. it's been a long running uh, action by Ukraine, the SBU, uh, Budanov and the like of the scamming of Russian citizens. Initially, it was just for funds, but we've seen this change where they then demand certain actions if you wish to have your money returned to you and then some compensation on top. A 21-year-old girl threw a Molotov at a school, uh, risking hitting a young child on the promise of a very paltry 2,000 ruble uh, reward. Uh, she now faces 12 years in prison because of a foreign power being involved in citing these uh, violent acts. Of course, the West then claims that this is a, a political charge. Uh, and then, actually, if I just make a point to the previous one wait, where wait, we wait, talked wait. about... Just, so just so we can make... <laughs> so. 
<laughs> violence is democracy and voting is not according to the West. absolutely right <laughs> yeah okay. so yeah to stage your protest you <laughs> you need to burn schools and endanger not just civilians but children as well uh, it has to be mentioned that 11 people are reported to have died in Belgorod from direct shelling of polling stations there from the Ukrainian military. So it has been a concerted effort on, on the part of targeting civilians. On a side note as well, we hear a lot of talk about these are illegal elections taking place in the Donbass. Uh, Donbass, as a small region, specifically the Donetsk People's Republic, 95% of people voted for Putin as opposed to the other candidates. Uh, the other point I wanted to make about opposition was it's very rich of the West to accuse Putin of blocking Nandezhdin, among others, when we've had Biden weaponize the law enforcement agencies against Trump and literally have him removed from the ballot. So the US is in absolutely no position to uh, preach to anyone on those regards. But with regards yeah, to these, these actions, uh, why would you need to do that? In the Western media, allegedly everyone's in protest, revolt, they hate Putin, they hate the war, and this was the chance for them to uh, overthrow him. Why would you need to orchestrate such actions if the people are in this sorry state that you claim they are? Right, good point. Uh, okay, you pointed out the hypocrisy of the US, noted and agreed with. Let's um, also look at the hypocrisy, hypocrisy of the UK. David Cameron posted over the weekend that the polls have closed in Russia, and that was an illegal holding of elections on Ukrainian territory, which you just pointed out. Uh, a lack of choice for, choice for voters and no independent OSCE monitoring. This is not what free and fair election looks like. And yet a, a Twitter community notes say, oh, that's so interesting that they had nothing to say on widespread election rigging in Pakistan. So would you like to comment on that? Uh, yeah, Lord Cameron wouldn't know democracy if it sat on his face, quite frankly. He's a non-elected, he's an appointed individual, non-elected, much like Rishi Sunak, appointed, not elected. So again, the UK is in absolutely no position to preach to anyone else. I think one of, I think it was Rogov of the State Duma pointed out that the UK has only the right to uh, vote on the geographical uh, territory of England. They're occupying Scotland, Wales, Ireland, among many other places, which, yeah, is quite a right point to say. So Northern Ireland in particular, could you not argue similar if you're going to point the finger at the areas of Donbass? Uh, Zaharova has also come out with similar comments. Uh, the, the UK, are, as we know, one of the main orchestrators behind this, but again, to point out that there was no choice of uh, opposition, outright lie, there were three other candidates, as I've already mentioned, to do so. The fact is that people are not interested in the policies that these other candidates represent. Does the U Would the UK have preferred the second uh, leader, Hare, uh, Haritonov, the Communist Party, to have come to power? I suspect not. Right. So as I say, it, it's a real farce across the board. Yes, it is. Well, thank you again for bringing us this perspective from the ground. You can follow Mike Jones at Foreign Agent Intel on Telegram. Uh, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks again for coming on Redacted. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Mike. I and think people just don't realize that Putin's main opponent is the Communist Party. So, you know, the West hardly wants to embolden a Communist Party because that's not the talking points of the West. It's just such ignorance. You know, I think they might actually. Something Look what happened in Port... Uh, go ahead, Phil. Oh, I was going to say something I find interesting uh, along that point. Uh, when I was looking up, like, just, you know, putting together general B-roll for the Russian election this morning, uh, there was... The, when I just typed in Russia in the, the where I get, like, my B-roll... The first like images that came up were communist flags. Hmm. And I was like, that, I, I said Russia, not USSR. But it, it came up like all, it was just all like communism on the first oh, page. Maybe we do want them to go back to Well, communism. the West absolutely, absolutely wants it. Just look at what happened in Portugal in the Portugal, Portuguese election, of course. You had the Green Party basically being marginalized. They had to team up with the communists basically to even get any kind of, they've been cast out. So they have to team up with communists right now in order to try to gain some sort of a minority in parliament. And this is happening across Europe right now. So of course the West would want to embrace communists. They would be, they'd much prefer that. So you talk, you guys talked about some of the propaganda and a lot of the, the violence from the West 
Britain, the UK specifically, and Ukraine shelling different polling sites. Ukraine, though, also launched a whole big weaponization this weekend of videos and uh, f and propaganda from these polling places. And this was hilarious. I mean, this was absolutely hilarious and quickly debunked. So Ukraine launched these videos where they showed these are supposed to be Russian polling places. And their point in releasing this was, see how tough it is to vote in Russia? You have soldiers looking over your shoulder to make sure that you vote for Putin. And what's hilarious is this guy was carrying a toy gun. And very, uh, and they used this same location for multiple videos that they filmed where they showed people being wrestled to the ground by the same soldier where using a toy gun. Um, there's not even a table in these tents here, in these, like, in these rooms where they're, they're standing. There's nothing you can actually write on and fill out your ballot. This is great. This is great. I love that Ukraine is spending so much money right now on this type of propaganda. Yeah. Like, this is where their efforts are right now, putting Which out this Which is skirt. so hilarious clear, because you can't Russia. vote at all. Oh, yes, you're right. What's that? I said it's clearly Russia because I don't know if you noticed this or not, but there is a Russian flag right there, right. conveniently right. located in the left third of the shot. And the woman doing the, the homework there, she's like, she's like, I gotta make, I gotta look like I'm actually doing something I'm here. These, I'm, I'm writing things down. I'm, I'm, I'm checking your votes. I'm making sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm well, maybe if we had audio, we'd find out that they, the way they vote in Russia is they just go behind that curtain and then yell out who they support, and then that woman <laughs> marks it down on a piece of paper. Yeah, but this soldier is making sure you're voting for Putin with his toy gun and his saggy pants with his Antifa mask. Oh my god. I mean, this is the level and of again, Ukraine has canceled elections. Those people don't even have the right to vote at all. What's hilarious too is that they he's even they're even putting up the the fake pretense of a curtain. He's like, I'm going to go behind the curtain and I'm going to pull it closed like a shower. Look at this. He's like, I'm going to pull the shower curtain back closed again because like well, I I really want your privacy. Let me just close that up for you. And or right, here, let me close this one up. I'm going to pull this one closed All because right, I care about your good. privacy. And, okay, go back to being private. All very right. scary. <laughs> oh, propaganda. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.